everybody. Sorry, no superpowers today. Uh, we'll have to catch up when I get back. And uh, I appreciate you guys being flexible with me. Uh, I'll explain what's going on when I get back. So, until uh, that time, please, let's not waste this time. Let's try and make it as, uh, as, as fluid as possible. Um, I'm asking you to, to do a few different things um, each day. Uh, I've also opened up all the My AP progress reports. Uh, I think those are excellent review. Uh, this class generally has been doing better than last year's classes, but I think we've been tripping the last week on uh, goofing off and not really focusing. So I want to get us back on track, and that was my goal this week, and now this has prevented that. So um, let's see if we can't uh, uh, focus this week. If, if this class has meant anything to you, and I really hope it has, um, make it up you know, by, by making this week really count. And that way, uh, we'll be in good shape for the exam. I don't want to lo- use this time, lose this time, uh, if I can avoid it. So hopefully you've completed this and you've submitted it already. Uh, I'm going to go through how to solve this problem. And I'm also going to talk about the point totals that were given for each, uh, a section. So question A says using Gauss's law, derive an expression for the magnitude of the electric field, um, at a radius in some distance inside the, uh, the surface, and it says draw an appropriate Gaussian surface on the diagram. So uh, they are specifically looking for what um, what you drew here. So I would have drawn a, a smaller cylinder inside here with a radius of R. Um, you need something that is symmetrical that can be used to deal with the fact that it's likely that the electric field inside here is uh, radial to the center line. So uh, there's one point for a correctly drawn uh, cylinder inside the cylinder. Next they gave, I'm just gonna move this off to the side because we don't need that anymore really, so I'll put that over here. Next, to continue getting credit here, because they gave five points for part A. Uh, so for using Gauss's law, they you know they expect you to say, okay, so uh, Q enclosed equals epsilon naught times E dot DA. So for any correct statement of Gauss's law, and then for a correct expression for the Q enclosed. Now, uh, calculating Q enclosed, you need to, to recognize that this has a uniform volume density of, of rho. So we need to figure out what the volume of your, your cylinder was. Um, so I, I didn't label it, but you, you'll need some label for here. I'm going to use H. So uh, I, I'm going to say my Q enclosed is rho times the volume or rho times pi r squared h. So any use of that was a point, any use of this is a point, and of course the picture is a point, so we're up to three points. So then you needed to, uh, you need a correct expression for the surface area, the sides of the cylinder is what they say in the solution guide. But what, I, what they really mean for you to do is to take this epsilon naught, the right side of our of our um, integral, recognize that there are probably three integrals. So one for the sides, and that's e dot dA for the sides, plus one for the top, e dot dA for the top, plus one for the bottom, e dot dA for the bottom, and adding all three of these together uh, will be the the integral through the whole area and hopefully you you know that these are both zero there's no flux through the top or the bottom leaving us with just epsilon naught times e dot da for the sides if we assume the electric field is uniform exiting the sides and if we assume that the electric field is uh, traveling right through the sides, so it's aligned with the area then all this is gonna be is the sum of the area of the side of your, your cylinder. So that'd be epsilon naught times E times uh, two pi 
R H. And they gave one point for that. That's four points total. So now to get that fifth point, you had to solve for the electric field. So bringing down rho pi r squared h and doing a little bit of mathy math that we can cancel out the pi. We cancel out the h. And it looks to me like I'm going to get the electric field is equal to rho r over 2 epsilon naught. Now, uh, it's linear with R. Uh, this is not unexpected. We've seen this before, both inside a sphere, and we've seen it now inside the cylinder. Uh, I'm not surprised by this, and we've done this problem before. So, there you go. Last point, five points just for that. Question B, using Gauss's law, drive an expression for the magnetic electric field for things outside of this. Um, you will be disappointed to know that you only get one point for doing this. And I think largely that's because it's the exact same calculation with the only difference being that now our Gaussian cylinder is bigger than the cylinder that's here. So let's just draw a quick one here. The, you're not required to draw. You only get one point. So really it's the expression. And you could have memorized the expression. They just gave one point for the correct answer. Um, and it will be the answer of an infinite line of charge. But if you went ahead and worked it out, um, then you know that inside there, you're going to have a fixed amount of, of charge that doesn't change. You know, in the first one, the amount of charge that you enclose in your Gaussian surface changes as R changes. But now as R changes, the amount of, of material inside there isn't changing. So our, um, our, uh, that's what I want to use here. Our, our charge enclosed is pi capital R squared times um, uh, H, I guess. But our area, again, epsilon naught E times 2 pi R H. So working that out and getting a value for E. I get rho r squared over 2 epsilon naught r. So this takes the place of lambda for the infinite line. But again, all that only worth one point. We're up to six points. So just as an aside, as we go through this, the average on this particular one year was given was 6.8 points. So considering that we are already up to six points, and I think we've done all the heavy lifting. Um, the next part is this graph, and uh, graphs can be tough. So, oops, I want to grab more than just that. Let's see if I can grab more than just that. I guess not. So, I'm trying. Come on, be my friend. Nope. Well, why? Why make it easy on me? On the axis below, sketch the graph of the electric field E as a function of the radial distance for R equals R equals zero to R equals two R. Explicitly label, that's a big deal here. This is a 2013 problem. So at this point, when you see the word explicitly label any intercepts, asymptote, max, or minimum with numerical values or algebraic expressions as appropriate, they want the label. So I'm not sure if you understand what you can label, but um, I don't think it's, I don't think you have to label the fact that this is zero, and we know that at zero, it's going to be zero, so we'll get a linear function here. Now, this is referring to the fact that our electric field was linear in the beginning of this. When we reach this point here, this is when R equals R. So if I plug that in here, I get rho r equals 2 epsilon naught. That is this point. Rho r 2 epsilon naught. And after this, our electric field changes and becomes rho r squared over 2 epsilon naught r. 
So I expect this to do something like that. They gave a total of three points for this graph. The first point was for the graph in the region zero to R showing a straight line at the origin with a positive slope. So that was one point. The next was for the graph in the region outside of R is continuous and decreasing concave up. So you had to have all of those. Continuous, decreasing, and concave up. And for labeling this value and indicating that that was the maximum, maximum we get this graph. Three points there. So we're up to a total of nine points for this portion of our problem. Not terrible. I mean, if, but, I mean terrible if you couldn't get this. And they don't have anything in the grading documents to indicate what would happen if you were consistent with what you solved for. So you know, it's hard to, to know if you would get, have gotten any credit outside of that. So let's go on to question D, which is worth three points. Uh, D number one is worth three points. It says derive an expression for the magnitude of the potential difference between R0 and R equals R. So this is inside. And it asks, is the potential higher at R equals zero or higher at R equals R? Now, I'm hoping you can answer that one straight away. That is it going to take more work to get to the center or more work to get to the edge? And we should all be able to say it's going to take more work to get to the center. So I would expect the potential to be higher there. But let's see how we would actually do the calculation. Um, and this is what's interesting. I didn't ask for the potential. It asks for the potential difference, and that's important. We can use our expression for potential difference, and we've you know had some some run-ins with this before. Um, we just have to make sure that when we calculate the potential difference, we are you know careful to indicate you know our starting point and our ending point. It says between r equals zero and r equals r, so we're going from zero to r. Um, you could do this a couple different ways. Uh, I mean, not a couple different ways. You can consider this a couple different ways. And we've had conversations now about the negative sign and what we're expected to do. Um, here, here's how they did the points for this. They said one point for any indication that you um, knew to use delta V equals E dot dr. Um, they didn't care whether you put the negative sign there or not. This must have been a year that they decided the negative sign was flexible or when they were just beginning to change their view of how to deal with the negative. Uh, for substituting the expression in for the electric field, so you did have to use the electric field that you got from earlier in the problem. Not a surprise. So you're going to do rho um, r over 2 epsilon naught uh, dr. And then they want you to integrate with the proper limits. Um, not, I don't think this is crazy here, but uh, most of this is a constant. So all you have is R. So this is going to be rho over 4 epsilon naught. And this is because we're going to go R goes to R squared. Bring out the 1 half. Um, you know, just to make sure that we're all on the same page. Uh, I will bring out the rho over 2 epsilon naught. And in here would be... Uh, one half r squared evaluated from zero to r and my negative out there. And so um, they gave, um, let's see, looking at what they did, they gave one point for that, for putting in the correct expression for the electric field, and they gave one point for executing the integral and getting an expression uh, for, for the, the potential difference which we put in zero, of course, that just negates it. And we would get minus rho r squared over four epsilon naught. And what's funny is that they, they gave this answer whether you had the negative or didn't have the negative. So, you know, they're really not being clear about it. And it doesn't, you know, it's not a problem for me, except that, um, you know, we had such a conversation about it and they are going to boil it down to this one question here about is the potential higher at R equals zero or R equals R. So even it seems to me the graders are kind of saying to you, yes, we understand this is a confusing point, And so we will forgive you if you have the negative or don't have the negative. 
So they excused having this negative sign or not having this negative sign everywhere in this problem. If you don't believe me, look up the grading guidance from 2013 because that's what it is. Nah, that's where I'm getting that. So um, moving on, uh, you get the one point for indicating that it's uh, higher at zero than anywhere else. And so we go to the next page. Uh, how many points we have? That's four. Uh, how many points left here? So it looks like there's only two points left. And you have to draw this problem again. This time it's a conducting cylinder. It's funny because you still have to explicitly label any intercepts. So uh, they only gave two points for this whole thing though. And one was for recognizing that inside the conductor, the electric field is zero. But it should spring to life with the same electric field right at the edge because the amount of charge hasn't changed. So you should still label that and then have the same kind of decay. They gave one point for drawing a horizontal graph, basically making the graph horizontal at E equals zero from zero to R. And they gave one point for a graph consistent with the graph in part C. So whatever you did in part C, if you recreated it here, that was worth another point. So a point for that and a point for that, and that's your total. So if you would please take your total, show me with your highlighted and red pens how you did, and um, let's turn that in. Uh, I'd like you to turn it in if you can before the end of class. I don't know if that's possible, but you should just resubmit right on top of the old lesson. All right, uh, in addition to this, I you saw there's a, a, another practice. It's kind of a weird one. It's a weird Gauss's Law one, and um, I'm giving it to you. I think I'm not, I think we might have talked about it a couple of many months ago, but try and work outside. The idea is set your alarm 15 minutes, do it for 15 minutes, and then submit it. If you want, if you didn't finish, you can draw a line and continue, but make sure you draw the line to let me know where you finished. All right, thank you guys. Have a great day.